Hi everyone, it's Nick here from Notarial. Today I'm going to show you how to add an insurance claim to an invoice, how to add an EOB, and how to add an insurance payment. We will also go through some other insurance features. But first I just want to point out you need to set up your insurance before you can mark up the info invoice appropriately. So we're going to go to the settings and we're going to click on insurance. I've already added two insurers and if you want to add more insurers you can click the add new button as well as I've added some insurance codes so I've added some billing codes and some diagnostic codes and I just did that again through this add new. The form fields um, you're going to do a quick select if you're in the states you're going to click, click CMS 1500 if you're in Canada you can click tell us e-claims and these are the fields that will be primarily on a policy so this is the information an insurance policy that will be saved to a profile uh, patient profile or client profile in your clinic once you have your insurers and insurance codes and form fields set up we can start adding um, some information to that invoice so let's go back to the calendar and I already have some marked up uh, in this invoice here but we'll We'll start with Pat and then we're going to come back to Pete Peters here. So we're just going to create an invoice. And then we're going to go to invoice three. And it's for uh, chiropractic treatment for $60. And we're just going to click add insurance. And I'm going to add a billing code. So the price of the original treatment was $60. So I'll go ahead and add a billing code. So I'll just I'll select manual therapy and the manual therapy that I have saved in that settings page was 110. I can choose to override this if I want so I can type any value in here. I can click on the drop down and I can select the value from the original treatment or I can just leave it. I think I'll just leave it. So I'll, I'll also add a diagnostic code. So again from the diagnostic codes that I had saved I'll take the M25 and I can put a modifier in, on here as well. So I'll just put a quick modifier on here. And I can add another billing code. So you can add as many billing codes as you'd like to the invoice. The next step is to add a claim to the invoice. So the first step is to add billing codes. The next step is to add a claim. If I had previously added a claim, I could copy uh, the billing codes from the previous claim and bypass this step. So if I'm going to be using the same billing codes and the same set of uh, ICD or diagnostic codes and modifiers, I can just copy from a previous claim. If I already had a policy saved on this profile, which I don't, there would be an active policy, so I don't have that, so I need to add a new policy. And we'll go ahead. And so the very first thing you need to do is put a policy name in here. And this is for internal use. So I'll just say it's a work policy and policy group or plan number. I'll just put some numbers in here as well as the member ID or the certificate number. And the default payable. So this is really important. So the default payable is to the patient. Uh, the responsibility at the end of when we're evaluating this invoice, you'll see when I go through this, will be on the patient. If it's payable to the clinic, the responsibility it will be through the insurer and I'll step that step through that so it's very important that you select this appropriately and then you can fill out the remaining details about the policy so we'll just leave it at that for now we're going to add a policy and claim so I've added a policy and claim and because um, I've selected payable to clinic it's going to put the responsibility on the insurer um, this is the claim itself, so this is a primary claim, and I have a view and an edit in the drop down as well. So, if I needed to make any changes, so for example, if I needed to change the payable to, I can do that through the edit. So, let's go ahead and we'll add our EOB or explanation of benefits. So, the original uh, claim I submitted was for $110 for 97 uh, for this code 97140, and uh, when I was um, submitting the claim it was eligible actually for only a hundred dollars and so there's a ten dollar difference so I have an option here I can leave it meaning that the patient is going to be responsible for it or I can adjust so I can make an adjustment to this and it will reduce the uh, it'll reduce the invoice by ten dollars and you'll see it'll make an adjustment over here when we're finished with this 
So it's eligible for $100 and the insurer has agreed to pay $90 and so the patient responsibility is $10 in this case. If I were to change this to leave, you'll see that the responsibility is added to the patient portion. If you want to capture details of the deductible copay and coinsurance, you can. And it just, uh, these values, these three values will equal the $10, for example. So I'm going to, I can click save EOB or I can click the little triangle here and I can mark it as approved. Or if I don't know if it's been approved yet, I can just mark it as submitted or rejected or paid. So I'll just mark it as uh, approved. And then you can see, um, I'll open that back up, uh, the EOB. And you can see how it's been evaluated. So the eligible was $100, $100 but the insurer is paying 90. So you can see the insurer portion is here is 90. I left $10 and so I have a $10 portion plus the amount left. And so the remainder is $20 and so the patient balance is $20. So that's how that is being evaluated. So I've added a policy and so there's the next step I need to do is pay this invoice off. So I can mark finish. And when I go back to this invoice, again, you'll see how it's being evaluated. So $20 is the patient responsibility. So let's go ahead and we'll pay that off. So I'll click patient pay. Change it to $20 because that's all they're only responsible for. So that might be a copay, for example. And I'll add a payment method. And maybe they pay me $20 cash. And I can either mark it off as pay or I can click off this uh, little triangle and I can make it pay in print or email or PDF and I can show upcoming appointments. So I'm just going to mark it off as pay. So if we go back to this invoice, so invoice number three, again, you'll see that there's a transaction now on this cash. The patient balance has been zeroed out. This is just the responsibility and the patient total. So there's $20 there. $20 payment was made and so the patient balance is now zero. So we have an insure balance of $90. So the clinic is going to collect $90 for example. And so in order to pay this balance off, we have to pay the claim off. So you're not going to do this on the invoice. You're going to go through the insurer pay portion. So you can click on this and it's going to take you to the insurer section. So I'm just going to close this and I'm going to show you manually where this would take you. So we're going to click on the billing section. And here, you know, we have our invoices and transactions on this page. Um, the invoice is not showing up because the invoice was actually into the future. So if I change my date, for example, oops, I didn't mean to uh, change the date. If I change the date and I'll apply, oh, I got to apply the custom range. Sorry about that and apply custom range, you'll see all the invoices. So those invoices that I just created um, were in the future and so that's, that's why they're, they were not visible. So you can see it does break down the portion. So I, we haven't looked at these two invoices, but this is who we're dealing with was Pat Summer. So it's partially paid because that $20 that was made and this is why it's showing a balance. Next section is the insurer section. And so if I click on the insurers, um, you have some you can click through this or edit and there's a drop down here as well so you can see the payments or any policies on the insurer section the payment section we'll come back to and insurance policies as well and these are all the policies that we have in our clinic and you can see any claims against any of those policies next is the claims themselves and so i don't have any claims in draft form i don't i have one submitted and that's the one that we were working with currently and I have um, a couple of uh, approved claims as well. Paid's not going to get a total. And once they are paid off, they'll be listed here, but this won't be totaled and any rejected claims. So you, you have a top level of anything that you need to be dealing with. So let's go back to the insurer payment workflow. And when the payment comes in, you're just going to click receive payment. And you're going to collect, uh, click the insure that it was for. So I believe it was for cooperators and just the payment method that came in. So we'll just say that um, in this case, it was an insurance payment. And let's just say $50 was sent. 
So the next thing you can do, you have two choices, add to credit or issue to claim. Add to credit just means that the payment hasn't been dispersed yet and you can come back and disperse uh, that amount if you want. So we're just gonna issue it to claims. And in this case, and in this case, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, take a look at the amount paid. So this is a payment method of $50. For example, um, that was an insurance payment. And when we come to the next section, you can filter all the claims that you have. Uh, so you can search by patient or policy group or plan number. And in this case, we also have some other filters here, the statuses by status, by all draft submitted or approved. It's default to submitted or approved. So we'll look at the Pete Peters that I was looking for. Um, they only gave us $50. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that. And again, you can see there's that billing code that we received. This is the information about the claim itself. The maximum amount that we received was $50. So we can put $50 against the claim. Oops, we can put $50 against the claim. And so uh, we now have $50 against this um, uh, claim that we submitted. Um, and again, if you recall, this is how the EOB was being evaluated. And so we come down here. And so the payment amount was $50. Nothing's been issued previously. And there's a, an available 50 and to be issued was 50. And so we'll issue that to the claims. And so it's been issued now to invoice number two. So if we click on invoice number two, you'll see, so you'll see that there's still an insurance balance of $30 and a patient balance. Oh, this was the, this was another claim. I'm sorry, I paid the, the wrong claim off in this case. So this claim actually had two claims on it, but it was still being evaluated in a similar fashion. So of $30. Since I have this opened up, this is a, an interesting case because we have actually two claims on this. So we have a primary and a secondary claim, and I'll show you how this is being evaluated. So let's go ahead and we will click on edit EOB. So this is a primary claim and you can see it was eligible for hundred dollars. There was an insurance portion of 80 in this case and the patient portion of 20, but we left $20. So the patient responsibility was $40 in this case, but it was payable to the clinic. So the insurer was still responsible for uh, the $80 and there had been $40 left over, but because we made a payment of $50, um, it's, it's, uh, the insurer responsibility is only $30 in this case. So this is important. Oh, sorry, let me just go back to this. So this is important. It's this patient portion. So the $20 uh, for the, the patient patient and the, the amount that we left, we're going to now cycle through the secondary claim. And so if you take a look at this secondary claim, you can see that $40 it was originally $120, but that $40 is what we're going to cycle that through. And in this case, I marked it up as eligible 30 and the insurer portion was 30. So anything in that in that patient pays portion, so I'll go back to that one more time. Anything in that patient pays portion plus whatever is left is gonna be cycled through uh, this secondary claim. And so that's how the primary and secondary claim will be evaluated. Okay, and then we can go to the paid invoices they're just going to show no because it's, again it's in the future i'd have to just do a custom range here apply and you're going to see uh, that paid and so again it's partially paid um, so you can see these statuses as well so this red indicates that it's a partially paid uh, insurer responsibility so there's a, a little key up here um, to determine you know what the statuses are and it's also down here so that's basically the insurance section. There's also a report section for accounts receivable for insurers. So I'll go to the accounts receivable section. And you can see I have all insurers and all patients. So it's, um, it's also broken up. I have an insurer and a patient uh, responsibility here. So if I wanted just to do insurer receivable, I can. If I just want to do a patient receivable, I can. So if I select just the patient responsibility, you can see that 
there's a still a patient responsibility for twenty dollars if I do the insurer responsibility and check off this you can see that blue cross there's a receivable for blue cross or you can do a combination of both so when you come to the accounts receivable report you do have the ability to um, either filter your receivables by the insurer or by the patients okay and so again i got that through the insurer page so if i go back to the calendar and again i can see those two invoices that i had created so that's the overall basic structure of insurance um, and how to add a claim in EOB and an insurer payment. So thanks for watching and please click subscribe if you'd like to be notified as new videos are released.